Getting into the Pokemon trading card game is easier than ever before, but with dozens of products, multiple formats, and thousands of cards to choose from, where do you start? If you're building on a budget, then there's always the trusty theme deck. With a bit of cash and a lot of creativity, you can build something bold and battle ready. You're watching Deck Boss. Hi everyone, and welcome to Deck Boss, the show where we take classic theme decks and give them a competitive tune-up. This week, we're going to try and supercharge the Ring of Lightning theme deck from Steam Siege. Ring of Lightning is one of those theme decks that hasn't aged well since the good old days of 2016. Featuring a surprisingly powerful deck boss and a curious spread-based strategy, the deck is really brought down by a brutal trainer lineup and 2021's ballooning HP stats. It's definitely not the best we've worked with, but we'll see what we can do. Now let's crack this open and meet our deck boss. The Ring of Lightning theme deck is built around Hoopa. This portal slinging demon is a basic Pokemon with two attacks. The first attack, Hyperspace Punch, costs one colorless energy and does 20 damage to two of your opponent's Pokemon. The second attack, Portal Strike costs 3 Psychic Energy and does 130 damage, with the drawback that you can't use it again next turn. As far as deck bosses go, Hoopa is a powerful contender. It's a basic Pokemon, so it's quick to play, it has a relatively chunky HP stat of 130, and its attacks offer a nice balance between sniping and brute force. But Hoopa does have a couple of minor drawbacks too. Portal Strike is an expensive attack, and its cooldown effect does limit your ability to be aggressive with Hoopa turn after turn. To make Hoopa work is actually a fairly simple affair. It needs Psychic Energy Acceleration to get Portal Strike online quickly, and we need to give it mobility in order to chain together multiple Portal Strikes. If we can do those things, then this relic from the X and Y era can actually do some serious damage to the behemoths who dominate the 2021 metagame. Now let's jump back to the theme deck and see what it gives us to work with. I'll be honest, Ring of Lightning's lineup is pretty bare bones. Staple cards are few and far between, but we can at least look at some of the interesting choices that are on offer here. This deck's strategy is built around spread damage and Galvantula used to be one of its best enablers. It's a dual type, which is cool, and its double threat attack lets you do 30 damage to two benched Pokemon while applying weakness and resistance. It's a really cool idea, but the damage is just not enough to justify using it in 2021. There's this Ampharos that lets you put three damage counters on an enemy Pokemon EX once per turn, but it's slow as a stage two, and Pokemon EX are harder to come by on the ladder these days, so it's a hard pass. You also get this fun little Halucha, which forces your opponent to switch their active Pokemon out when you play it onto your bench. It's basically the Fion from Cosmic Eclipse without the reusability. So another pass. And as for the trainers, things are kind of rough. Shauna is the only decent draw supporter here, offering a shuffle and draw five, which just makes it an inferior Cynthia. You get Ninja Boy, which lets you tag out one basic Pokemon in play for another in your deck, which is cool, but a little too gimmicky to make much use of it at the moment. Evo Soda allows you to search out and evolve up a stage one Pokemon in this deck, which is fun, but again, not the most consistent or exciting option here. But you do get an Ultra Ball, which is a really solid searcher, so that's something, at least. And finally, you get this nice little energy package with Professor's Letter and Energy Retrieval to ensure that you always have enough energy on hand. And as for the rest, don't worry about it because there is literally nothing else. Ring of Lightning is such a rough deck. Aside from Hoopa, this deck just lacks the raw damage output needed to even compete in the theme deck meta. X and Y theme decks on average really lack the consistency and utility found in their Sun and Moon Descendants, and that's definitely the case here. Really, if you're gonna pick this one up, just do it for the nostalgia. And two are definitely not required in this case. Singles are a thing after all, so 
you do you. And now that we've got the basics, let's jump on over to PTCGO to see how we can make this deck work. Okay, so when you see expensive psychic type attackers like Hoopa, the obvious answer is to pair them with Malamar. In particular, I thought this was a great idea because Malamar is not that hard to get your hands on. It's accessible through a couple of theme decks, which means it's a great budget choice. But I wanted to take a different approach to the Malamar build because the engine allows for quite a bit of expression. Where Necrozma, for example, was more about raw power, I wanted to draw inspiration from Hoopa's portal hopping fists and create something that could spread damage around while also punching big holes in the enemy. And thankfully, there were plenty of deck lists to draw inspiration from in order to create my own little spell tag Hoopa deck. The beating heart of the deck is obviously Malamar. I tend to prefer the full 4-4 count because your prizes can often mess up your counts, and smart players will always know to target your NK and Malamar first. This way, you can usually guarantee that you set up at least two Malamar, which should be enough to get you through most games. Blacephalon is a nice tech choice here, because it allows you to spread damage counters around the board on the cheap. And if your opponent goes down to three prizes, you can spread up to 12 damage counters around setting up some key KOs, or even just taking them outright. Esper is a bench sniping monster. Its Irkinesis attack does 20 damage to a benched Pokemon for every damage counter already on it. So, for example, if there's a Pokemon on the bench with 100 damage on it, then Irkinesis slaps on an additional 200 damage. So, you can hit some pretty ridiculous numbers quickly, especially if Hoopa got in the first hit with Portal Strike, allowing you to even KO some VMAXs with ease. Espeon and Deoxys Tag Team GX is a beefy beat stick more than anything, but it does have an interesting GX attack that allows you to potentially spread 200 damage counters around the board, which can, yeah, straight up board wipe your opponent if you set things up correctly. Also, sometimes you just need something to take a hit, so it's always helpful to have that big body on board as well. And Oranguru is just there for a little bit of insurance against things like N, or to help you draw a few extra cards in a pinch. I don't know why, but I can never seem to find my draw supporters these days, so while it does create some anti-synergy with Deoxys and caps its damage output a bit, it is a staple when you want to avoid benching more powerful draw multiprizers like Dedenne GX or Oracorio GX. Speaking of draw supporters, I am playing a slightly thicker line these days because I can just never seem to find them when I'm playing anything less than a 10 count. Cynthia and Lily are always a good place to start when upgrading these decks to ensure that you don't toss away key combo pieces, and N of course allows you to potentially punish an opponent who gets ahead of you early on. There's also a healthy Guzma count because you're often setting up KOs on the bench as often as you are taking them in the active. So this lets you choose your targets pretty well. Also, you need something to be on the bench for Malamar to charge it up, so it provides some necessary mobility to in a pinch. Our search package consists of Mysterious Treasure and Nest Ball, which should let you set up a number of Malamar pretty quickly and find your combo pieces easily enough throughout the game. Viridian Forest is helpful as always for dumping energy into the discard pile for Malamar to accelerate. No more explanation required there. Floatstone provides some extra mobility, ensuring that you always have an easy pivot available as you're charging things up with Malamar. And now, onto the spice. Spell Tag lets you place four damage counters anywhere on the field when the equipped Pokemon is KO'd. It's useful against tag teams, turning them into an easy two-hit KO for Hoopa, or you can use a few Spell Tags to take out vulnerable baby Pokemon on the bench, especially if you already tag them with a hyperspace punch. Or you can use it in combination with horror energy to KO the Pokemon who just knocked you out. Honestly, you have a lot of options, and these two cards in combination will often force your opponent into making some difficult decisions. Speaking of horror energy, it lets you do 20 damage to the enemy active whenever they hit into the Pokemon it's attached to. Again, it's great for getting in critical chip damage to put something in 2-hit KO range more often than not. And if you can stack these, then you can really grind down the enemy Pokemon. The ideal scenario, of course, is, as mentioned, to combine this with Spell Tag, 
to drop damage counters like crazy anytime your opponent takes out one of your main attackers. And finally, we play a healthy count of basic psychic energy to ensure that Malamar always has something to charge up. This kind of deck is pure evil. If you've ever run into the Giratina variant of Malamar, then you kind of know that these decks can often steal a win from right under you, setting up KOs that nobody saw coming, or just grinding you down until you don't want to play anymore. Hoopa, in its own way, can kind of play a similar game to Giratina, so I'm hoping that it can find at least comparable success. And now that we've got our lineup, let's jump on over to the expanded ladder to rain down damage counters all over our opponents.
<laughs> you know, uh, I guess power creep has always been a thing because Hoopa holds up extremely well as a deck boss from the old days. Getting smashed in the face for 130 damage still stings, and while VMAXs are a pain in the ass to deal with, as long as your opponent doesn't have steady access to healing, you can eventually overwhelm them. And yeah, with a bit of help cheating out that extra damage, you can take out things that you have absolutely no business battling against in a more competitive setting. Honestly, this kind of archetype is not something that I'm terribly fond of playing myself, because the experience of playing against it is usually infuriating. Spelltag Malamar used to have the title of a gatekeeper deck because it could both grind out GX-based decks and those centered around one prizers. If Giratina, which was often the main attacker in decks like that, didn't one-shot the opposing Pokemon, then it definitely got the two-hit KO. Or Spelltags would ensure that your precious basics that you needed to evolve up never got the chance to do so. I can't quite say that the vitriol against Speltag Malamar reached ADP levels, but still, running up against this archetype was rarely a fun time for the opponent. That said, I do like how easily this framework allowed Hoopa to keep up with the big basics and trade well against evolving decks too. All in all, the two X and Y theme decks that I've tried so far have been fun and very surprising. Or at least I should say that while neither of the X and Y theme decks we've covered have impressed me in their totality, I do have to admit that their deck bosses have actually stood the test of time pretty well. And I do hope that I continue to be pleasantly surprised as I work my way through the back catalogs of theme decks in general, whether that's Sun and Moon, X and Y, or hey, even the upcoming V battle decks. And anyway, that should wrap things up for this week. You guys know the drill by now. Like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. The endorphins from putting out these shows every week has recently led me to make some uh, questionable purchases that most reasonable people would balk at, but alas, we all need our theme deck fix, me in particular, and honestly, the fact that these decks were extremely elusive didn't help. Uh, you always want what you can't have, and so, you know, when I saw him, I knew I wanted to do an episode, even if the deck bosses aren't the best, I just, I had to have them. So keep an eye up for the uh, the episodes I make down the road to justify those kind of ridiculous purposes. And really, guys, you know, I, I do it all for you. So that totally justifies any reckless spending on my part. And on that irresponsible note, we can call it a day. I'll catch you all in the next video. And until then, stay safe and take it easy.